It's my plea that the message of the Quran be widely spread. May the flag of Islam become more elevated than the rest. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen amma ba'd. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أو بلاود نبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said that a person who sends 50 times daily durood or salawat or salutations upon me, I will shake hands with him on the day of judgment. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatam wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habib Allah. Dearest Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, Alhamdulillah, Azza wa Jal, once again, we are blessed with the opportunity to participate in this beautiful silsila, Blessings of Quran of Madani Channel. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we will discuss the ayat number 31 of Surah Al-Baqarah in today's silsila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَائِهَا أُولَاءِ بِأَسْمَائِهَا أُولَاءِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names of all things. ثُمَّ عَرَدَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ Then he showed those things to angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَائِهَا أُولَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, Inform me the names of all these. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are truthful. This was the literal translation of the verse which I have recited. Now let's try to understand as usual word by word the Ayah Karima. The Ayah Karima begins with the word Allama. Allama is derived from Ta'aleem which means to give knowledge or to teach. Hazrat Adam salam was given the knowledge of the Zad and the Sifat of Almighty Allah Azzawajal before his creation. That is the reason when the soul was put into his body, he sneezed. And when he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. Now in Alhamdulillah, there are two things mentioned. One is the Zat of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And the second is the Hamd. And Hamd is the Sifat. Because Allah is Mahmud. He is praiseworthy, his being praiseworthy is his quality. So two things are proven that the knowledge about the Zat and the Sifat of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal was given to Adam salam before his creation. That is the reason that when the soul was put in his body, he sneezed and he said, Alhamdulillah. And some part of the knowledge was given to him after his creation. As it is mentioned in Rivayat, in the narrations that when Hazrat Adam 
looked at the door of Jannat. He says, Kana maktuban ala babil Jannati la ilaha illallahu Muhammadur Rasulullah. Also, a narration says that Kana maktuban ala saqil arsh la ilaha illallahu Muhammadur Rasulullah. And also, it is said that Kana maktuban ala awraki ashjaril Jannati la ilaha illallahu Muhammadur Rasulullah. This tells us very clearly that Hazrat Adam salam knew the knowledge was given to him that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Akhiru Zaman. He is the last prophet. He is the seal of prophethood. There is no prophet that's coming after our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he knew his nabuwat, his prophethood, he recognized him and also he was able to read the words. Because La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, these are words, these are sentences. Lam, alif, alif, lam, ha, all these are words. Where did he go and learn these words? He was not gone to any madrasa to take tuition or no teacher came and taught him anything. So this tells us very clearly that Adam salam was given the knowledge via ilham. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the knowledge and that is called ilm al given, granted by Almighty Allah As we all will learn the Arabic language when we die. The question and answers in the grave are in Arabic. The language in Hashr, on Hisab Kitab, the language of Jannat is Arabic language. Even if someone doesn't know Alif Ba Ta Tha of Arabic in this, in this dunya, when he dies, immediately he will know Arabic language. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give that understanding, the knowledge of the language at that time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful to do that. So there is no difficulty to understand how did that happen? How is it possible for someone to know so much without being taught? Allah is all powerful, He's almighty. So if He wants to give that knowledge to anyone, He can do so. Then after the word Allama, the word Adam is used. Adam is derived from Adumatun, which means that the wheat color, the color of wheat, that's Adumat. Or it is derived from Adimun, which means apparent piece of earth and both the meanings are befitting in the personality of Hazrat Adam salam, that the color of his skin was the color of wheat so his skin color was wheat color that is the reason that he is called Adam and the second meaning is that his sand to make his model, to make his body was taken from different parts of the earth which was open and apparent. And for that reason he is called Adam. And as far as we are concerned, we are called Adami. And why we are called Admi? Because Admi means the one who belongs to Adam. In Urdu we say Adam Wala, belongs to Adam. Because we all belong to Hazrat Adam as human being. Every human being is belong to Hazrat Adam because he is our father. We are his progeny, we are his children. That is the reason that we are called 
آدمی حضرت آدم علیہ السلام واز ویری بیوٹیفل مین ہز ہائٹ واز سکسٹی ہینڈس سکسٹی ہینڈس ہائی اینڈ ہینڈ دا میجرمنٹ آف ہینڈ از فرام ایلبو ٹو دا ٹپ آف مڈل فنگر دیر از دا میجرمنٹ آف ون ہینڈ سو سکسٹی ہینڈ از کوائٹ ٹال سو ہی واز اے ویری ٹال مین اینڈ دس واز از ہائٹ اینڈ دس وڈ بی دا ہائٹ آف دا جنت از ان دا جنت سو ایون ایف یو آر شارٹ ان دا دنیا وین یو آر ان دا جنت یو ہائٹ وڈ بی آف سکسٹی ہینڈ سیم ہائٹ آف حضرت آدم علیہ السلام اینڈ ایز فار ایز دا جہنم از آ کنسرن سم آف دیم دے سائز ان دے ہائٹس وڈ بی ویری ہیوج لائک اٹس مینشن ان ون آف دا روایت ان ون آف دا نریشنس دیٹ اے ٹوتھ آف اے جہنمی وڈ بی ایکول ٹو اے ماؤنٹین and of course the the teeth are within the mouth and if that is the size of one tooth and then you can imagine 32 teeth and those teeth are within the mouth then how big the mouth would be so these are scary type of sizes and very odd sizes but the sizes of jannatis would be very beautiful And that would be the size of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, 60 hands. Then we see the word Asma'a. Wa'allama Adam al-Asma'a. Asma'a is plural of ismun. And ism means sign or recognition or height, elevation. The name, name is also one of the meanings of ism in today's time. When we want to mean name, we use the word ism. It is mentioned in Tafsir-e-Kabir that the first meaning of the word ism is taken in this ayah karima. And that is to... recognize everything knowing the sign of everything and recognizing everything that's what is meant it means that hazrat adam alayhi salam did not just know the names only rather he recognized everything recognized the details of everything he recognized the benefits and the harms of everything. He recognized every state and every condition of everything. Because just telling someone that this is the name of uh, this atom and this is the name of this atom and this is the name of this atom, it doesn't help. It doesn't complete the knowledge by just knowing the name. If you don't know for what it is, what it does, what are its benefits, what are its harms, how it is manufactured, how it is made, for what purpose it is made. If those things are not known, then by just knowing the name of something, there's no really excellence in it. And this is against the status of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, because Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was going to be appointed the successor of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, Khalifa of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, a representative of Al- Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. What was he coming to represent? The Zat of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. What was he coming to represent? The Sifat, the attributes of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, the rule, the orders, the power of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, it is necessary that A person who is going to be appointed at that position, he should have the detailed knowledge of everything. And some ulama igram have said that the word ism is in its literal meaning. That Adam alayhi salam knew the names. So still too, 
if we only knew the names then everything has a name and all its sifat and attributes and qualities also have a name all conditions also have a name for example the name of this body which is in front of me is table now table is made with wood that's another condition and wood is also a name a person who manufactured this is called carpenter carpenter is also a name it is cut to sizes so cutting to size is also a name so every condition that you think about relating to this table that's in front of me it has a name and that name takes you into the detailed knowledge of this so therefore whether you mean it that way or you mean it this way it boils down to this point that hazrat adam alayhi salam was given the detailed knowledge of everything and this is befitting to him now imagine if this is the knowledge of hazrat adam alayhi salam hazrat adam alayhi salam's knowledge is like a drop in front of or in comparison to the knowledge of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so what would be the vastness of the knowledge of yours and my master our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam nobody can imagine and nobody can comprehend that that is the reason that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the knowledge of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he says wa 'allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam that o oh beloved allah has taught you all that which you did not know everything which you did not know so there is no condition of ism here there is no condition of name here and there is no restriction of words or huruf here because the, the knowledge of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is very very great far greater than the knowledge of hazrat adam alaihi salam now let's have a look at the vastness of the knowledge of hazrat adam alaihi salam from another angle see the word kullaha is used the word kullun we all know it means all it is mentioned in quran e kareem khaliqu kulli shay'in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khaliq of everything so is there a thing in the world which is not created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no there isn't anything which is not created by almighty allah azza wa jalla so ulama ikram have said that similarly there isn't anything because the word kullaha wa 'allama adam al asma'a kullaha the word kull suggests and and tells us very clearly that there isn't a thing which had a name and adam alayhi salam did not know about it and everything had a name there is no brand which is called no name even though people are selling these days certain things and they call it no name actually no name is their name so everything has a name so when everything has a name adam alayhi salam knows everything and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with that vast knowledge then if you ponder upon something very relevant is that from the beginning to the end of this world there are millions of languages which were spoken and are being spoken and will be spoken and each and every language has millions of words because there are millions of things and for everything there has to be a, a name there has to be a word so if one needs to know the whole language then then calculation of his words would be in millions and then different 
conditions of things, different halad, different situations of things, everything has a different name. It's, uh, it's amazing. The, the vastness, the more you think about it, the more you would appreciate the, the greatness of the beloveds of Allah, prophets of Almighty Allah. Now let's take an example that there is a word uh, which is called water in English. It is called Ab in Persian. It is called Ma'un in Arabic. It is called Jal in Hindi. So now these are a few examples. There are hundreds and thousands of languages. Go and ask them. There'll be different names for that one thing. And then in writing also it would be different. In Urdu if you want to write you'll say Pe Alif Noon Ya Pani. And if you want to write the same thing in English you'll say P-A-N-I. Now these are all together different alphabets, different huruf. So in each and every language you go, you will find different way of writing. That's part of the language. And then the water, for example, it has thousands of different kinds. For example, cold water, hot water, clear water, dirty water, you know, salty water, sweet water, heavy water, light water, you know, thick water, thin water, white, black, pure, impure. I mean, there are too many things that you can talk about. This we are discussing just one word. Imagine when you talk about millions and millions of words of every language. And then those names and then the named one and their details and their halat and their discussions and their conditions and their qualities. Amazing. So that great, great knowledge has been granted to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. It is mentioned in Tafsir Ruh al-Bayan that Hazrat Adam alayhi salam knew 700,000 languages. 700,000 languages. And he knew 1,000 professions to earn his living. But he adopted the farming. Because farming is a is a beautiful uh, profession. It, in farming, you grow food. You add to the basic sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to his creation. Therefore, our father, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he went to do something for his living, which was not just beneficial to himself, but was beneficial to others as well. And then we continue talking on the word kullaha. It has more and more beautiful and wonderful meanings. That from kullaha we understand that Adam salam knew the zat and the sifat of Almighty Allah Azzawajal. Now knowing in detail the zat and the sifat of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, that alone is very great knowledge that nobody can measure that knowledge and nobody can understand and comprehend that knowledge. And then Hazrat Adam salam knew the names of each and every angel. And imagine that the, the numbers of angels are very huge. They are nine times more than, and the jinns are nine times more than human beings, and angels are nine times more than jinns. And as we know that 70,000 angels come in the morning and 70,000 angels come in the evening to read Salatu Salam at the Roza Mubarak of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the angel that came once will never have turned again till the day of Qiyamah. That tells you the, the large quantity and the number of angels. 
So Hazrat Adam alayhi salam knew the name of each and every angel and their states and conditions. And he knew the name of all his children were going to come till the day of Qiyamah. Their names as well. Their conditions, their, their states. Even who is going to Jannat and who is going to Jahannam. Hazrat Adam alayhi salam knew about them. So everything, whether it was living or not living, every ni'mat of Jannah, Adam alayhi salam knew. The names of every ni'mat, they in millions. Adam alayhi salam knew that. Even basic things, this is a ball and this is a shield. Ulama Ikram have went so far and they said, even if someone passes wind, and if he passes wind softly, what is the name of that in the language? And if he passes wind loudly, and then what is the name of that? Now imagine just if you calculate in all the different languages, just by this one thing, it, there's nobody who can memorize that. There, there's nobody who can remember that. I mean, detail. When you talk about detail, then there's nothing left. So this is the vastness of the knowledge of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma aradahum alal malaika. Then he showed those things to the angels. So, Thumma aradahum, this word is telling us very clearly that it was not just the names, the things were presented in front of the angels. So how is that possible then? Things are presented in front of the angels and then they are being asked, tell what are the names? And Adam salam was just told names and nothing else. So that's not possible. Adam salam was also shown all those things. He recognized them, he knew them. And more than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the detailed knowledge of everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels after showing everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inform me. This was said to the angels so they can express their humbleness. They can express that, oh Allah azza wa jal, we don't know much. We only know what you have taught us. And what you have not taught us, we don't know about it. And there's a lesson for us. People become very proud when they have some amount of knowledge. And many people, they behave as if they're the only one who have knowledge and regard every other person as ignorant. And, and you can smell that arrogance. You can smell that pride, that the way they express themselves or they talk about themselves so there is a lesson for all of us to learn that if you are in the field of knowledge always keep yourself humble and always relate the knowledge towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah I only know that which you have granted me and what you have not granted me I am ignorant about it I don't know about it and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Inform me the names of these things. Now the word asma is used twice in the verse. First, وَعَلَّمَ Adam al asma And secondly, أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِهَا أُولَاي Ulama Ikram have said, In the first asma, it means the name and the named one and the detail of everything. And in the second asma is only name, not the detail. Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to show the angels that you objected on the creation of Adam alayhi salam. You are not equal to him. He is special. He's my successor. He's my Khalifa. You can't be like him. Look at him. He 
knows everything. He got the knowledge of everything. He knows the detail of everything. So if you think that you are equal to him, then don't worry about going into the details. Just tell the names. That's just the names, nothing else. And they were unable to tell the names alone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed to the angels that this person who is going to be appointed as my successor is very special. That's why I've decided and what I know you do not know. Because angels were thinking that you know the one who is masoom, who is sinless or the one who is abid, who works very hard in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one deserves to be Allah's successor. So in their understanding that the man is going to commit sins, bloodshed, this, that, as it's being mentioned in Quran and and so forth. But this tells us something very interesting that Adam alayhi salam is not being created yet. His children did not come yet. The fight did not start yet. The blood shedding did not start yet. How did the angels know? So that means they were also given the knowledge of unseen. It was not just a prediction. It was the knowledge with, with confirmation and certainty because what they said is happening exactly the same. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deny when they said, they are going to come and there will be bloodshed and there will be fitna and there will be fasad and they will be doing this and they will be doing... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that. Oh no, 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 they won't do that. So, Anbiya are greater than angels and our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is greater than all the prophets. So if the angels can be given the knowledge of unseen, why the prophets can't be given? And if the prophets can be given, why can't the imam and the leader of all the prophets can be given the knowledge of unseen? These are beautiful madani flowers that we learn from this ayah karima and we learn the greatness of the Prophet From this ayah karima we learn some very important madani pearls. Number one, that to go and sit in khalwat, in isolation, in chilla, in ibadat that you disconnect yourself from the people Knowledge is greater than that. Because one side were angels, they were abid. Fully dedicated to the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's other side person who's with knowledge. He's greater. So therefore, those ulama who, engage, who are engaged in knowledge, in seeking, in giving, in teaching, in learning, in mutalia, in studying, in research... They are indeed greater than those who have isolated themselves in the ibadat of Almighty Allah Azzawajal because to engage in the knowledge of deen is a great form of ibadat. So we learn from this ayah agreement. And we learn another madani flower, another beautiful point that prophets salam, are greater than angels. So if anyone has any mis misconception and misunderstanding in this regard, it must be cleared up that the prophets are greater than angels. And we also learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the knowledge to prophets, which is called ilm al -dunni. And from the word allama, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches the prophets. There is no person or human being in this dunya who becomes the ustad or the teacher of any of the Nabi of Allah. Then we learn few fazail of ilm and ulama. It is mentioned Hazrat Faqi Abu Layth Samarqandi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi He says that in the suhbat, in the company of Ali Medin, you will have seven benefits. Number one, 
that person who sits in the company of ulama, he will be regarded as talibul ilm, as a student of knowledge, a seeker of knowledge. Number two, all that time that he is going to spend in the suhbat of an alim e deen, he will be saved from committing sins. Number three, and when he leaves his house with the intention of seeking the knowledge, he gets neki, he gets sawab and good deed on every step because he is going to sit in the company of an alim deen. Number four, in the halqa, in the gathering of ilm, ilm deen, the rahmat of Allah, the, the mercy of Allah descends and person participates in that gathering, he also gets his share of the rahmat of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And number five, that to listen to the knowledge of deen is ibadah, so he's in, in the ibadah of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And number six, and when he hears any difficult masala, an issue, and he can't understand, and he feels hurt in his heart, that why can't I understand? His heart becomes humble. So he's included amongst munkasirul qulub, people whose hearts are humble, because he now ponders upon his weakness that, you know, I, I can't understand. So when you say, I can't understand, you're showing your weakness, and that's a good quality that takes you away from pride, that actually breaks your arrogance and your pride. And this is very good for spiritual development because the pride is a big blockage it's a barrier that stops you from going towards the qurb and the nearness of all of almighty allah and number seven that in his heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the izzat of knowledge and hatred for jahal, for ignorance. And this is a wonderful quality. If someone is knowledge loving and he hates ignorance, that means he will never stay ignorant and he will never support ignorance. He will support the knowledge and ulama and he will always be in the company of ulama. And Hazrat Sayyidina Ali al Murtaza Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala no says that. Ilm is greater than wealth for seven reasons. Number one, that knowledge is the inheritance of the Prophet ﷺ and the wealth is the inheritance of Fir'aun, Haman, Shaddad and Namrud. Number two, when you spend the wealth, it becomes less and when you spend the knowledge, it increases. Subhanallah. Number three, man looks after the wealth but the knowledge looks after the man so what you should have wealth or knowledge and number four after you die the wealth remains in the dunya but knowledge goes with you in the cover and number five mal dunya wealth everyone gets kafir momin everyone gets but the benefit of ilm deen is for the believers only. And number six. That nobody is carefree from ulama. That means they all are dependent upon ulama. But there are too many people who don't need wealthy people. So the need of an alim is always there. And number seven, he says that when you are crossing the bridge of Sirat, you will be empowered by the knowledge. And if you are a wealthy person, that will cause weakness to cross the bridge of Sirat. So what is better to have, wealth or knowledge? These are wonderful words of wisdom which we learn from Khalifatul Rasul, 
حضرت سیدنا علی المرتضا شیر خدا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ تو دیر است اسلامی برادرز اندر ویوز آف مدنی چینل وی شوڈ بی نالج لونگ پیپل وی شوڈ گین نالج لرن نالج بی اندر کمپنی آف علماء اور ریگارڈ آور سیلوز تھرو آور آور لائفز ایز سٹوڈنٹس سیکرز آف نالج آف دین می اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی انکلوڈ اس امانگس دا مخلص اور سنسیر سیکرز آف نالج آمین بجاہ النبی الامین صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاة و سلام علیکہ یا سیدی یا رسول اللہ و علی علیکہ و اصحابکہ یا حبیب اللہ It's my plea that the message of the Quran be widely spread May the flag of Islam become more elevated than the rest 